My name is Dena Boynes Baudouin. I am going to reveal to you the why in my teaching methodology by analyzing the results of my TPI survey, identifying my dominant backup and recessive perspectives, examining internal consistencies and discrepancies, and lastly, considering my next steps. Much of my year's experience as a teacher involved me in the business of how. How to effectively deliver concept lessons, how to motivate students, how to use technology to enhance learning, and so on. Behind all this lied the implied message that I should conform to some conceived notion of a good teacher, to the singularity of good teaching. I am now given the opportunity to explore and analyze why I teach the way I teach. Is the way I ask questions, listen and respond affected by my beliefs about learning, knowledge and my appropriate role as an instructor? Are there any discrepancies between my beliefs, intentions and actions about teaching and learning in my subconscious? To determine the interrelated set of beliefs and intentions that navigates and validates my action, I use a tool called the Teaching Perspective Inventory, here on after referred to as TPI, developed by Dr. Pratt and Dr. Collins as a result of over two decades of research. The TPI identified my dominant or co-dominant perspectives my recessive perspectives, and the backup perspectives I have. These perspectives are transmission, apprenticeship, developmental, nurturing, and social reform. It drew out from the tangled web of information my beliefs, what I believe about teaching and learning, my intentions, what I try to accomplish during the teaching and learning process, and my actions, what are my actions when teaching? These subcategories will aid in identifying states of internal consistency or internal discrepancies within my various perspectives. Internal consistency exists when beliefs, intentions, and actions all align. That is, when scores lie within one or two points of each other. Internal discrepancies occur within a perspective where beliefs, intentions, and actions do not align, that is, where scores differ by three or more points. The teaching perspectives are defined by Pratt, Collins, and Selinger as follows. Transmission Effective teaching requires a substantial commitment to the content or subject matter. Apprenticeship. Effective teaching is a process of enculturing students into a set of social norms and ways of working. Good teachers are highly skilled at what they teach. Developmental. Effective teaching must be planned and conducted from the learner's point of view. Nurturing. Effective teaching assumes that long-term, hard, persistent effort to achieve comes from the heart as much as it does from the head. Social reform. Effective teaching seeks to change society in substantive ways. Here are my results. Three horizontal lines can be seen on my TPI profile chart, which are unique to the respondent. The middle line is the mean for all five perspective scores. Four perspectives lie between the outer lines, that is, within one standard deviation of the mean score, and one perspective stands out notably higher. The top line is the high or dominant threshold for my dominant perspective. Any perspective score that reaches or exceeds this line is dominant for me. 
the bottom line is the low or recessive threshold for my recessive perspective. Any perspective score that is at or below this line is recessive for me. Between the dominant threshold and the recessive threshold are my backup perspectives. These are the instructional expertise and approaches that lie at the recesses of my mind that can be utilized when necessary. The perspective which stands out notably higher than the rest for this cohort, that is my dominant teaching perspective, is nurturing. This score of 43 is significantly high as scores for each perspective can vary between 9 and 45. This cohort of students for the first three years of secondary school have failed mathematics obtaining marks below 25%. It is important to me that students know that everyone is capable of succeeding in mathematics and ground rules are laid to ensure that the classroom is a safe place in which to work. The students are not provided with information they can derive, but are provided with opportunities for them to experience success while maintaining the standard and level of work they are being prepared for. It comes as no surprise that the nurturing perspective is my dominant one, as these are the things that I strongly believe, where I am most comfortable. This is not only evident by my score of 43 and the fact that there is internal consistency, but by the fact that these students have shown academic progress, are highly motivated, and have become a source of strength to their peers. The next four perspectives lie within the back of perspective zone. When considering these four perspectives, the profile appears flat. This that profile is usually associated with those new to the teaching profession or those who have multiple teaching responsibilities across varying venues, types of learners, contents, etc. I fall into the latter category. I have been teaching for over 28 years and my teaching responsibilities range from primary to tertiary, from religious instructions to parenting from students to teachers. Only one of these four perspectives lie over the mean, the apprenticeship perspective. This is my major backup perspective. Where possible, I use everyday situations to develop concepts and show how the mathematics is applicable. There are times when methods must be demonstrated using instructional examples. These are always followed by semi-dependent examples than by independent ones. They are given opportunities to be instructors to their peers. This is all part of scaffolding the work according to their zone of development. In the apprenticeship perspective, my beliefs and actions are aligned, but, the, but there are some discrepancies with my intentions. Two of my perspectives lie at 32, just over the recessive threshold of 31.32. They do not lie in the recessive zone due to the fact that I do challenge my learners to move from the simple to the more complex forms of thinking. I emphasize the importance of understanding the subject area through the use of practical situations as examples in order to place them in a better position to help those who would succeed them. Unfortunately, these two perspectives are the ones to be sacrificed because of time constraints and heavy workloads. It is interesting to note that in all but one of my perspectives, I scored highest in my intentions. In the apprenticeship, developmental, and social reform perspectives, my beliefs and actions are closely aligned, but there is some discrepancy with my intentions. Why are my beliefs and actions so varied from my intention? On reflecting, my intentions are not formed for their own sake, but to lead to an intended action. These intentions are linked to my beliefs. So one can only see 
there may be other underlying beliefs causing this discrepancy. Maybe I believe that it is impossible for things to happen due to poor infrastructure, lack of resources, time constraints, and heavy workloads. Taking the TPI has given me the opportunity to look at why I teach the way I do. Presently, I am comfortable with where I am, I am at, but I know this can change. I plan to use the TPI as a source of feedback by having my students do it using my email. Additionally, have the teachers in my department use this tool and utilize the result to initiate discussion. This is my interpretation. Thank you.